Hello, I'm Neil Beauchamp, uh, Integrated Solutions Specialist here at Grossenberg Implement in Winter, South Dakota. And we'd like to talk a little bit today about our 2630 display and functions and operation. Uh, first thing, most important tab is the menu tab in the bottom right corner. And from that menu tab, it can take you to all of your functional operation. Just to step through these one at a time, we've got our standby mode. So if you're in a road transportation mode and you don't want that display powered up, you can put it to sleep. Touch the screen anywhere, brings it back. Bring you back to your menu tab again. Uh, next tab up is uh, self-explanatory as a calculator. Next tab up is your video. This display is capable of handling up to three video inputs from three different cameras and you can manage all three of those cameras through video one, input two, and three. Uh, next one up, access manager. If you as an operator want to lock out operation from other operators from making changes, you can lock this display from that point. Uh, back to menu again, we have uh, layout manager. Through layout manager is where you would set up your initial run pages. You can see right here we're on run page three of five. So if I want to change what is on this screen, say I went out and I have hooked up to my planner, mm -hmm. and I want to put it here, just touch the screen there. If I was hooked to a planner or an air seater, it would be available here on the menu. And in this case, I'm just going to go to a performance monitor. I have one option there. I touch it. You can see it is now there. I hit accept. Now on page three, now has my performance monitor there. And that is how you set up your run pages. Again, back to menu, layout manager, we went through, display. <clears throat> this is where you would go in uh, if it's late at night and I don't like that screen being so bright, I can back it turn off. it down, back it off, or I can go simply go to night mode or day mode from there to go through. I can adjust the volume of my alarms, or if I don't like the red, blue, or green backlighting, I can go that direction as well. Back to the menu page again, we've covered all of those. If I'm pulling an implement that requires operation on an original Green Star monitor, which is our display from on an average of several years ago, I can still run that display on this in emulation mode. And full functionality on that just like it was a original brown display. Um, Green Star 3 operation takes him to all our Green Star 3 functions. Menu again, performance monitor, message center, more of a diagnostics uh, section. Uh, we can go in through reprogram mode, check our software versions, which is always important, and our software versions change yearly, so it is important to check these and can make sure you're Pretty much every year? Yes, twice a year actually. Menu, message center, and of course, our position receiver today is plugged in, so it is on the menu. Under, uh, through that tab, I can go through info, look at my lat longitude latitude, go to my setup mode, view that I am on an SF1 signal. My activations, if it was activated SF2, I can view when my license or expiration dates would be. And I can also hit satellite there. If this receiver was outside, I would see all the satellites that we are communicating with and where they are in my rotation or location on Earth. There's How long are the license good for? You can purchase your license for as little as three months or up to three years. For different, uh, three years, $2,500, or three months is uh, 650 And that's just the correction signal for SF2. That gives you sub two inch accuracy, two inches or less on a 3,000 receiver. On our older ITC receivers, that will still be four inches. Uh, went through that pretty quick, but going back to our menu and Green Star 3, most common problems comes back to documentation. My display, when I put my planner in the ground yesterday, painted the screen, my documentation worked, but it will, it will not work today. What is wrong? Commonly, it's going to be under your resources, equipment, or documentation. Under resources, if I touch that, 
Client, farm and field must be filled out, populated. Task must be populated. Or if I'm just running off a height sensor on an implement and I don't want, all I want is documentation of acres planted, I can turn my documentation off. Then the rest is not so important, but if I want to, if I am planning, it's important to have that filled out properly. Crop season and operator are not critical, but client, farm, and field, and task are. Conditions are not critical, but I can put those in. Temperature, wind speed, but aren't critical to, op to uh, documentation. If I have special specific notes that I want to type in, I can do that as well under the notes tab. There again, that was all under resources. The next tab down is H equipment. Here again, for documentation to function properly, we need to have machine type, machine name, and all of this filled out correctly, and the offsets as well, which would be the measurements from position receiver to rear axle, rear axle to the front of the implement, so we know our recording point. Uh, if I change this from a combine to a, you know, let's scroll down through here to a tractor. Obviously, you can see my picture now changes, and my machine model, my tractor machine name should be filled out properly for proper documentation. On our new equipment, this will happen automatically. Implements. If my, if I'm pulling an air cart, there again, we need that filled out properly for documentation. Documentation. Here again, this needs to be filled out properly as well. Here we're set at harvest right now, so if I open up change harvest settings and I change my crop to, uh, let's say, clover, brand and variety must be filled out for proper documentation during harvest. Another option, if you're having trouble getting your documentation or recording to function, go to GS3. Here we hit setup. All of these boxes are basically check boxes of operation that I want to check. So if I'm having trouble with guidance and documentation, <laughs> and if I was on a planner with section control, I could check that box as well. I'm going to go through one of seven pages now, and on each one of these pages, what is critical for setup has a red asterisk next to it. It's a lot of what we just went through. The only thing is, is this now is going to take us through it all step by step. Page seven. Pretty next step on page two, red asterisk, red, red. Recording source, red. All has to be correct. If you're having trouble finding it, go through this. You will find it. There's going to be something wrong or incorrect somewhere. Change harvest settings. All has to be correct. Tracking mode has to be correct for guidance. Shift mode has to be correct. And it takes me through setting an AD curve, which has a red asterisk. If systems corrections are complete, everything's good. Back to my menu, and then I can go back home again. Multiple run pages. I can set up to five run pages instead of, if I wanted to, I could go to menu, layout manager. I want four run pages, so I select four. I check in the home collection. That will put it in the rotation every time I push the home button. I can split my screen either one of these ways. So if I wanted that option because, say, I want a video camera on this, then I can put my video there. Uh, let's say go up on that box, I want a GS3 function. I have one of 12 options here that I can page through to select what I want to put there. And I want that box there because it has my seed settings and variety types there. And the side box, the Green Star 3 again, I have one of 21 options. And let's say I want a, let's go through to a client farm and field box with my tracking mode. If that's what I want there, hit accept. Now on page four, I have just set up my run page four with everything I need.